All right, welcome back everyone. I am back in our Xcode project, of course, and let's right click the navigator and create a new file for this video. So it will be a Swift UI view. And let's call this UI view representable bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. Once you're inside, click resume on the canvas. I'm just gonna move the file down below our custom nav bar folder here. And if you were with me in the last two videos, we built a custom tab bar and a custom nav bar. Those were pretty challenging videos and they took a while and hopefully this video will be a bit easier, uh, give us a break from some of the hard stuff. So as I mentioned, UIV representable is used to convert a UI view from UI kit to Swift UI. So if you're familiar with UI kit and UI views and all the other views in the UI kit, uh, we can use a UI view representable to convert them from UI kit into Swift UI. So let's do a very basic one first. Let's create a struct and we'll call it a basic UI view representable. Let's make it conform to UI view representable and we'll open the brackets. And in order to conform to UI view representable, we need two protocol functions here. We need a make UI view and an update UI view. And these functions are pretty self-explanatory. The make UI view is the first function that gets called basically on the init of the basic UI view representable. And in here, we will actually make the UI view that we wanna put onto the screen. So for now, let's do a very simple one. Let's say let view, and we'll set it equal to a very plain UI view. This is the most basic view that we could get from UI kit. Uh, this view by default is white. So let's just change the background color. Let's call view.background color. We'll set it equal to red. And then let's return the view here. The update UI view will get called after make UI view, but we don't need it right now. So let's just leave it blank for a second. So let's put this basic UI view representable on the screen. So up here in our Swift UI view, I'm gonna create a V stack. At the top, let's put some text that just says, hello world. And below it, I'm gonna put a basic UI view representable. Let's click resume. And if we did everything right, we should now see our UI view on the screen. All right, so we have our UI view on the screen here. And obviously it's just a red color. We could have done this in Swift UI. So this is nothing fancy, but uh, what I'm getting at is in this make UI view function, we can initialize and create any UI kit UI view that we want. So this could be a UI view, it could be a UI image view, it could be a UI label, anything from UI kit that we want to convert, we can build it inside this function and then return it. So this is actually pretty simple to get it onto the screen. So we can see it here, it's working, but the challenge comes when we actually need to send data to and from our UI kit components. So let's go over a more complex example here. And I'm gonna start by removing our basic UI view representable from the screen. And instead I'm gonna put a Swift UI text field on the screen. I'm gonna open the parentheses. Let's use the string and binding the placeholder title. Let's just put a uh, type here, dot, dot, dot. And then for the text, we wanna to bind to a string. So let's create up here an at state private var text of type string. Set equal to a blank string. Let's bind with the money sign text. Let's click try again, and we should see the Swift UI text field on the screen. All right, so we can see the text field here, and we can use it like we've been in my courses, but one thing you might have noticed is that the text field really isn't that customizable. So for example, uh, the placeholder text here is gray, and there is no way to change the color of the placeholder text in our native Swift UI text field. If you're coming from UI kit though, you know the UI text field in UI kit actually lets you customize the placeholder color. So this is a pretty prime example of when you might want to convert something from a UI kit instead of using the Swift UI version. So let's start doing that. I'm going to do it right down here. Let's create a new struct and let's call this UI text field view representable. Let's make it conform to UI view representable and we'll open the brackets. And when I create these view representables, generally I like to take the UI kit name and then add the word view representable so we know exactly what it is. 
So in this function, let's conform to the protocol. Let's add our make UI view as well as our update UI view. In our make UI view, we're going to make a very simple text field. We'll say let text field. We'll set it equal to a UI text field. Open the parentheses and let's give it a frame of a dot zero. And then of course, let's just return the text field. Let's put this on the screen quick. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to put it below our Swift UI text field. So we'll put our UI view text UI text field view representable here. Open close parentheses and let's click resume. Uh, so it's here. I can see when I click on it that the cursor is here, but it looks like it's pushing everything up. So it's probably got like a maximum height on the frame. So let's just set the frame of this. It's called a frame with a height. Let's give it maybe 55. All right. And let's also give it a dot background color of color dot gray just for a second, uh, just so we can see where it is. And I'm going to do that on the regular text field as well. I'll do a background color of color dot gray give it a frame of 55 actually too. So it's so that they're at the same height. So again, we can see here that the placeholder text in our Swift UI text field, this first one is gray on gray. And if this was a real app, we would want to obviously change that placeholder text. So in our UI kit version, let's change the placeholder. So down here in our make UI view, we can customize the text field. All right. So in this text field, we can call text field dot attributed placeholder and this is going to place an ns attributed string uh, as the placeholder and now i'm not going to get really into how to use ui kit and ns attributed string we don't really do this in swift ui uh, but this is just basically a way that we can customize some text and then put that as a trick as a placeholder so if i look at it we need an ns attributed string so before this let's say let placeholder set it equal to an ns attributed string and we're going to look for the version with string and attributes. All right, so the string and attributes I'll put on separate lines. And for the string, this is what we want the placeholder to say. Let's just say type here, dot, dot, dot. For the attributes, we need a dictionary with an attributed key and then any. So I'm going to open the brackets here and the first attribute I'm going to call, I'm going to press the period here. We can see all the options. I'm going to look for the dot foreground color and let's make it a UI color dot red. Let's then take our placeholder and set it, our attributed placeholder equal to this placeholder. Let's click resume. And just like that, we now have a UI kit text field here with a, with red placeholder text. This is something that we would not be able to customize in our Swift UI text field, at least not yet. So a prime example of when you might actually want to use a UI kit text field. All right, so this is working perfectly here. We have our text field. It's customized with custom placeholder color, uh, but we have one problem still, and it's that the text inside this UI kit text field is not connected to the rest of our app. Before, but before we do that, I want to clean up this function a little bit just to clean up like the amount of code in this function here. So let's create down here a private func. Let's call it get text field. Let's open close parentheses. Let's make this return a UI text field. We'll open the brackets. And I'm just going to copy all of this code here, paste it down here, just so we can separate it from our function. And then in this make UI view, let's just return get text field. All right, just to clean up the code in this function a little bit. Let's click resume, make sure it is still connected. All right, so the first problem we have is if we type something in here, hello, it's not, the data is not getting sent to SwiftUI. And just to prove that, uh, the text on the screen in SwiftUI, this text, this state up here, let's make this represent what's in the text fields. So I'm gonna put this text onto the screen instead of our hello world here. So if I start typing in our SwiftUI text field, we can say hello and it starts showing up in our Swift UI app. If I start typing on our UI kit text field, I'm gonna actually just put these in H stacks just so we can very clearly know which one is which. Here, let's do text and say Swift UI. And then here, let's add an H stack and we'll say text and we'll say UI kit. All 
All right, so if I start typing in the UI kit text field, we can see that it's not updating our Swift UI app. So let's do that now. So the first thing that looks pretty obvious here is when we create a Swift UI text field, we need to bind to that text, right? We have the money sign text here. We're binding to this and we don't have that in our text view representable down here. So let's create that binding first. So coming down to our UI text view representable, let's create an at binding var, let's call it text of type string and let's fix the initializer. So now when we create this, we're going to have to bind to some text. We'll use the money sign text here. All right, so now we have a binding version of it inside our view representable, but we're not doing anything with it yet, right? So it's the text here is reflective of what's in our Swift UI app, but this is not getting sent into the UI text field yet. So how do we do that? Well, what we do in a UI view representable is use a something called a coordinator. So there's another function in here. I'm going to put it maybe below our get text field. There's another function that comes by default that's called make coordinator. If we read it, this creates a custom instance that you can use to communicate changes from your view to other parts of your Swift UI interface. So we can use this to coordinate changes from our UI kit view to our Swift UI interface, our Swift UI app. So let's create a make coordinator. And now the question is, what do we want to return from this coordinator? Right now, it's just returning void, basically nothing. But we want it to return something that will coordinate the changes between the text field and the text here. So if you're familiar with the UI text field or pretty much any UI kit component, you know a lot of them have something called the delegates. And if we call the text field dot delegate, we can actually set up the text field delegate, which will get, which will provide us with all of the text field functions. So looking at this, we can see that the delegate needs to be of type UI text field delegate. All right, so we don't have that yet. So I'm just going to comment this out and let's create something that can act as a delegate. So underneath this coordinator, I'm going to create a class and I'm going to call it coordinator. Let's make it, let's then open the brackets. And I'm creating this class inside this struct that we're in. And we normally don't do that in SwiftUI, but the reason I'm doing it is because this coordinator I'm only ever going to use and reference inside this struct. I'm never going to use it anywhere else in my app. And because of that, I can just make it right inside this function. So we have a coordinator here. And as we just found out, we want our coordinator to conform to UI text field delegate. When we do this, we're going to get a quick error message here that we cannot conform to UI text field delegate unless the coordinator conforms to NS object protocol. So very simply, all we need to do is conform to NS object as well. So we have a coordinator now and in our make coordinator function, we want to return a coordinator. So in here, let's return a coordinator and we will open close the parentheses to initialize it. Let's click resume, make sure it still builds. All right, so now we have a coordinator. Now we just need to set the text field delegate to the coordinator. So I'm gonna actually not do it in this function. I'm gonna do it up in our make UI view just to be a little more explicit. So in here, first let's say let text field, we'll set it equal to our function of get the text field. And then we're gonna call it text field dot delegate. And we need to set it equal to the coordinator inside this UI view representable. And we can actually do that very easily because in our make UI view, we are getting access to some context. And this context actually already includes the coordinator that's associated with this UI view representable. So in here, we can set it equal to the context dot coordinator. Then of course, we can return our text field again. Let's click resume and we are now updating our text field with a coordinator. So all is good, except if I start typing hello, we can still see it's not updating our Swift UI app. So what do we need to do? Well, in our coordinator, we're not actually doing anything yet. So one of the most common ones is uh, text field did change. Text field did change selection. And anytime I believe that there is text being changed in the text field, this function is executed and we can get the text in the text field. 
So the new text is going to be the text field dot text. But we want to send this text back to our Swift UI app. So we need to connect this data here to the binding text that we created a couple minutes ago. So the first step is actually passing this binding from the struct here. I'm just going to copy this into our coordinator. So in the coordinator, I'm just going to bind the text again. And because we're in a class, we need to actually add a custom initializer for this. So let's very quickly create an init. And we're just going to pass in a text that is of type binding string. And here we're going to set the self dot underscore text equal to the text. And again, I'm using the underscore because we're referring to the binding, the property wrapper associated with this text. So now when we create a coordinator, we can very simply bind to some text. So we already have this text in the struct here. So we're just going to use a money sign text. So now the text is connected into our coordinator. And when the text field changes selection, we're going to set our new text object here, this text variable equal to the text field dot text. Now this is actually coming through as an optional because there's a chance that there is no text. So we'll say if there's no text, otherwise a blank string. Let's click resume. All right, so now if I type in my Swift UI text field and I type in hello, we can see that our Swift UI app, so the text on the screen, which is up here, is being updated correctly. That's awesome. If I switch to my UI kit text field and I type in hello, we can see that it is also now sending the, that data back to my Swift UI app. And this is perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. But one thing that you might not, might have just noticed is that when I type in my UI kit text field, the text is also actually updating my Swift UI text field. And that's because the data is being sent to Swift UI, and then the Swift UI data is then being sent to this text field. But if I switch this and I type in my Swift UI text field, hello, we can see that the UI kit text field is not getting updated correctly. So the problem, the, so the final problem we have is that we're sending data right now from UI kit to Swift UI, but Swift UI cannot send data back to our UI kit component. So we have to configure it the other way as well. And thankfully, there's actually a very simple function that we already have in our app, and it's called update UI view. So this update UI view, we actually use to send data from Swift UI to UI kit. Whereas the coordinator we used to send from UI kit to Swift UI. So when we're dealing with so when we're doing with these view representables, we need to make sure that we are covering both directions. So UI kit to Swift UI and now Swift UI back to UI kit. So in this function, we need a reference to the text field. And we can see that this function by default is giving us some UI view and a context. Now this context is the same as this context. And this UI view is the same as the UI view being returned in this function. Now when we made this function, Xcode didn't know what kind of UI view we were returning here. So it gave us this generic sum UI view. But we know we're actually returning a UI text field. So I'm going to change this to actually return a UI text field. And the reason we can do this is because the UI text field actually inherits from UI view. So it is basically a subtype of UI view. So in here, I'll put in a UI text field. And now if we try to recreate this update UI view, if we let the completion happen, I'll type it again here, we can see that it's actually going to give us a UI text field, not a generic UI view type. And we're actually going to use that text field now because it's a little more specific and we can actually access the text in that text field. So in here, we're going to call UI view, which is the text field dot text, and we'll set it equal to the text from our Swift UI app. Let's click resume. And now if I type in Swift UI, we can see that it's updating in UI kit. And if I type in UI kit, we can see that it's updating in Swift UI. So we are now sending data both directions from our UI kit component.
All right, and a couple final things before we end this video. I just want to show you that we can customize the initializer for this UI text field view representable. So right now in our text field, we have the placeholder says type here and the attributes, it's red every time. But we can customize this if we wanted to change this for each version. So uh, up here, when we have our initializers, let's create a let placeholder of type string. And now when we create a UI text field representable, it asks us for a placeholder. We can take that placeholder and put it uh, into our code here. And we can also do it for the color. And the color needs to be of type UI color. So we can say let placeholder color of type UI color. We can take that placeholder color and put that here as well. So now when we create a UI text field view representable, it's going to ask us uh, for the text, the placeholder, and the placeholder color. So the text, I'll do money sign text to bind the placeholder. Let's just say new placeholder. And the placeholder color, let's, let's do dot blue just so we get a different color here. So I'm going to click resume. Awesome, we have our new placeholder here. And this is looking great. Uh, in reality, we probably want to set the placeholder color to like a certain color by default so we don't need to add it every single time. So we can actually create a custom init inside that struct. So down here we can create an init. And in here we can add maybe text of type binding string. What else can we add? We can add our placeholder of type string and we can add our placeholder color of type uh, UI color and if we don't add a placeholder color let's give it a default value by setting it equal to dot red. In here we can set self dot underscore text equal to text, self dot placeholder equal to placeholder and self dot placeholder color equal to placeholder color. So now we can come back up here and if I ever don't include my placeholder color in my init we can get that red by default. And the final thing I want to show you guys is uh, right now we're updating this UI text field with a placeholder. And when we create it, we're going to update the placeholder. But what if the placeholder needs to change on the fly and we want to change it after we actually create this text field? So now I want to add a function to customize this placeholder here. So let's come down here. Let's first make the placeholder. Let's give it a default value. So in this initializer, let's just set it equal to default placeholder. Uh, and we'll use a dot, 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 just so that we can see it on the screen. And then in our function up here, we actually don't need to add a placeholder. So let's just delete that, click resume. We should get our default placeholder on the screen now. Cool. And so because it's gonna change, we're gonna actually make this placeholder a variable here. All right, and, and now we're gonna come down, and now we're gonna come down into our code, and maybe below this get text field function, let's create one more func, and let's call it update placeholder. Uh, into this function, I'm going to pass in some text of type string, that will be our new placeholder, and we'll open the brackets. And let's add an underscore here so that we actually don't get the text when we call it. So we'll just say update placeholder with a string. And this function needs to return an updated version of our UI text field view representable. So this function is actually going to return UI text field view representable. Now, in this function, we want to start with the current version of our text field view representable. So we'll set, so in here, let's say let uh, view representable, we'll set it equal to self. Now self is the UI text field view representable that we are inside, right? So this function is already inside the struct and that's why we can get the self from that. And let's just put it on one line here. And then we're gonna of course return the view representable. So our error should go away. And the only thing we wanna do is actually change the placeholder before we return it. So in here, I can call view representable dot placeholder. Now this placeholder is the variable that we have up here in our view already. So now all we're gonna do is change the placeholder. So I'm gonna set it equal to our text that we're getting from this function. And we have a quick 
error here and it's because view representable is a let so let's actually just change this to a var all right and now we should be able to use our update placeholder function directly from swift ui so let's come up here uh, let's click resume on the canvas real quick just to make sure it's still connected so by default our ui text field view representable is going to have our default placeholder and now very simply we can call the update placeholder and we can put in our new placeholder all right so just like that we can see our new placeholder on the screen so we did this just with the placeholder text but you can then do it with pretty much anything you want to customize in your ui kit view so in this video we learned how to take ui kit views so we have a ui text field and put it onto the screen we then learned how to send data from ui kit to our swift ui app and we did that with a coordinator we then learned how to send data from our swift ui app back to our ui kit view we did that with our update ui view function and then finally we learned how a couple ways we can customize our ui kit view we can create a custom initializer we can pass in some custom data and we can even add these handy functions to explicitly update data in, inside our UI view representable after it's already initialized. All right, guys, that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to look at UI view controller representable, which is essentially the same thing, except we're converting entire screens from UI kit to Swift UI. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment and do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, as always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking and I'll see you in the next video.